So I want to speak about a statement that I made in my last video that may have brought confusion, and I want to bring some clarity to it. And the, uh, the statement was this. As far as I am concerned, I already am what I want to be. The only thing I'm waiting for is confirmation. And I understand why this could bring up confusion if it's seen as an affirmation. Now, I want this to just be seen as an, as an understanding and a knowing about reality. Not necessarily an affirmation. Personally, I do not believe in using affirmations to get things, I think. Unless the affirmation's said as a present tense fact and felt as that, then I think affirmations are useless. They have to be felt as something you are now or have now. The most important is the now. And, um, and I think that I'm going to read some Neville quotes, and I think that this will bring clarity to that statement, that the confusion was mainly, well, if I already am what I want to be, uh, why am I waiting? Waiting is also a state of mind, so I'm doing two things. Like, How can I be in two states like that? I either am it or I'm not it. So I hope that this, um, these quotes can bring some clarity. Neville states this, How long is it going to take between this imaginal act and its fulfillment? I do not know. But if the law is forever, well then, regardless of what is going to happen, do it now anyway. What would it feel like to be secure? What would it feel like to be wanted? What would it feel like to contribute to the world's good? Well then, assume that I am doing all these things now. And he says, tomorrow may not bring confirmation of what I've done, but do it anyway. And if I do it, then in a way I do not know, it will come to pass. So he tells you that, you know, you may imagine a magical act and its fulfillment within you. But tomorrow comes and it still hasn't fulfilled itself in this external world. Don't get discouraged. Mainly the mantra was more of a, uh, an understanding and to bring confidence to you. That's all it was for. It wasn't meant for an affirmation. And, uh, but it's very important that we address this because um, it does bring confusion when you think about it in terms of like, well, if I am it, why am I waiting? And um, an example I want to give is, is somebody who, who wants to be happily married. So they imagine themselves in their mind having a ring on their left hand, on their ring finger. No, typically that's what we do. And they feel proud to be wearing the ring. They feel proud of their partner. They feel they're in a loving relationship. But, and they lose themselves entirely in this imaginal act as if it's, ha as if it's real now. Okay? And they open their eyes and they see that they look at their hand and there is no ring physically. Well, um... As far as they are concerned, they are married. Who's married? Well, the one within them is married. And that's who they are. They associate themselves with that being. So they are married. Um, now, the external world may not show that in it, instantly, but don't get discouraged. Um, associate yourself with the inner man who already is married, who already is experiencing the wonderful relationship, who already feels these things, and associates themselves with that state. And um, basically walk with that knowing that my external has to conform to the inner man. And as far as you are concerned, um, you are that. It's more of a confident knowing is what I'm trying to get across. It's not a mantra or a, uh, um, an affirmation to get something. It's, a, it's an understanding that you already are. And when you say I already am, the I there is the inner self that already is expressing what you want. That is who you are. Uh, you feel that and you be that in the present tense feeling of being. And uh, Neville also says that, you know, he says that before he falls asleep at nighttime, he'll think about other people for what they've asked of him, things they've asked um, that they want. He says, I have a conversation with them as though I'm hearing them from the premise of their fulfilled desire. And then he says this, I do not ask them the next day or call them or write them. They call me. If they are given some, uh, he says, um, somebody will come to me and tell me, have you heard the good news? And they will tell me the good news about that individual that I imagined. If I'm faithful to my planting. And he says, every state produces its response. For the world is an infinite response. If I'm faithful and this law is forever, then everything must bring after it forth its own kind. So he's saying that I don't, when I imagine for someone, I don't check upon it to see. And uh, that's not what I meant by waiting. 
You don't consistently check, well, is it happening? Is it happening? Is it happening? The only thing you're called to do is persist in being it now. And as far as you are concerned, you are it now. If you must be concerned about something, you are it now. I'm, I don't think you have to be concerned. But if you associate yourself with the imagination and trust it, you don't have to be concerned. The only thing really that you have to do is just await for the confirmation. It must come. It has to come in this outer world because it already has happened in the mind. And uh, he also says this. He says, um, well, I did it. I made it. He's talking about in your imagination. It's unseen as yet. It isn't clothed in three-dimensional form, but I did it. He is the one who does everything. He's speaking about the imagination personified. He is the one who does everything, and all things are possible to him. So my reasoning mind will tell me, well, you don't know how it's going to happen. And then he says, as far as I'm concerned, it has happened. I'm only awaiting confirmation. It has happened. So the confidence is that, um, for example, let's go back to the example of somebody who's happily married. They already are that. It has happened. As far as they are concerned, they already are. They already have. Um, they are already experiencing. It already has happened. The only thing they're waiting for is confirmation in the external world. But they don't. you don't walk in waiting for it. You walk in being that. It must conform to the eye of man. Um, so... Think of it more as like a, if you have a doubt in the day, like as Neville says, like he says, oh, you know, my reasoning mind will say, well, you don't know how it's going to happen. And I'm sure we've all been there. Go back to this statement that, as well, as far as I'm concerned, I am that. I'm only waiting for external confirmation. It's a, it's intense, conf say, say it with intense confidence because it's true that the only thing you're waiting for is for it to shape to the I am. It must shape to the I am. It's not... Um, moving to the state of wanting and waiting we've already uh, gotten rid of that you already are it now and you've already fulfilled that now the only thing that's going to happen now from now on is it's going to express and externalize in this world so have full confidence that um that even if you know you doubt go back to this as far as you are concerned you really already are it and you can prove to yourself you are it well who's the you the inner man that's who's expressing in this world if you know that the only thing that's expressing is the inner man, then you really can associate yourself with that inner man being the thing you want to be. And um, if you truly move into that mindset where I am the inner man, I'm the inner self, and the inner self can shape themselves in the way I desire, or I can shape it in the way I desire, then um, reality becomes fun. It becomes, uh, you start no matter what the world of, as Neville says, the world of Caesar or society says, it doesn't really matter. All that matters is how I shape the inner self because that's all that's reflecting. And as far as you're concerned, that's who's reflecting. That's what externalizes. So don't, you, you walk with that confidence. And it's true. And um, I also want to, want to stress this is that if you're struggling with these, understanding these concepts, as I said before, if you are thinking in terms of separation, uh, you're thinking in terms of, or you start feeling fear. If you start thinking in terms of reflection, you start thinking more in love because life's reflecting you and you get to shape it the way you want to. But you don't have to fall asleep in states of mind like, oh, um, wealth or marriage or or um, those kind of um, outwardly states, I like to call them. Like there, You can also fall asleep in the understanding of this, is that many times I have fallen asleep feeling that the world's reflecting me. I just fell asleep in that mindset that life truly is my own reflection. And I felt that ease and that um, ability to feel fearless because what's there to fear if it's my mirror? And I would fall asleep in that. You can fall asleep with these um, uh, these statements, you know, like, like life is reflecting me. And fall asleep with the understanding and allow, allow that understanding to really let go of all these fears that you realize, well, there really isn't anything to afraid, be afraid of if there are no others. Really feel that. That life's just reflecting me, or like that I am the power of my life, that I create my life. Fall asleep in those states that what I assume becomes. And um, these states of mind will, you'll find yourself removing so many fears from just doing that. And it'll become much, much easier to uh, assume the states you want to assume. Um, you won't catastrophize them, you won't ruin them. You'll find yourself feeling, um, you find the inner self of you becoming utterly confident in everything you imagine inside yourself, you will know this must come to pass. This must come to pass. And you just move on with your day. And as far as you are concerned, 
<laughs> you already are what you want to be. And um, one more thing I want to stress is that everything is yours in imagination. If it wasn't yours, you wouldn't be allowed to imagine it. So everything within you is yours. No matter what it is, the fears and the lovely thoughts are yours. All of it is. You get to choose what you want. Every state you want to be in is yours. How you want to see yourself is yours. How you want others to see you is yours. And I want to, uh, there's this, um, this, I don't want to call it a technique, but it's a, uh, a sort of thought process that Neville gives. He says this. He, it's, I like to think of it as like the freeze method. He says that you imagine everybody in your mind almost as if they are statues and they're frozen and you, you kind of observe them. And then you say, it's like, and then you tell them, you tell these frozen beings who you are and how they are going to see you. And then you release them and then they start to, they reflect who you are. They empathize with you, not sympathize, they empathize with you. They see you the way you see yourself and they're, they're happy to see you that way. And he says, Neville says, then you're confident that, that will be executed in this world. And um, I love that method because that type of thinking, because it puts you in so much control in the mind that you freeze it and then you let it go and that you change it and it uh, reflects and it happens uh, in harmony. And you don't have to feel that, well, is it going to, is it going to? No, it is. It will happen. You are totally in control here. And I, um, I'm going to link that video in the description. I, I absolutely love this video because it, it really uh, illustrates the point who you are in imagination, that you're not just this thing that has to have fears attack them and has to defend themselves in their own minds. There's no one to defend yourself from. There are no others. There never has been. And once you can accept that, maybe, that, maybe you struggle to accept that now, but fall asleep accepting it. Fall asleep allowing yourself to not be afraid anymore. Regardless of what, just fall asleep feeling unafraid. You don't have to have a, a certain string of thought. Um, you, don't, you know, think what you want to think, not what you have to think, or what you think society wants you to think. Think entirely of your own wants. And I mean this when I say this. Be as selfish as you can be in your mind. Because it's your imagination. And everything is yours within it. Don't allow yourself to um, just think that you have to think certain thoughts. Think entirely what you want and live from that premise. I'm going to imagine what I want for myself and for others, what they want for me. You know, they, someone tells you, hey, um, maybe they don't understand imagination. They start telling you troubles in their life. Imagine as if those troubles are gone for them. And you just keep making everything into heaven. You really truly bring heaven upon this earth. Um, so... I hope that clarifies what I'm saying, that I understand the confusion. I understand why somebody would think, well, well you're going into the, um, into the state of waiting. And actually, I'm actually very glad this was brought up because it means that people are listening. <laughs> you know, um, it means what I'm saying is important and it's being paid attention to. So that actually makes me feel good. So um, thank you guys for listening.